Only four episodes in and we've already got our first televised game. Clearly, word is getting out there into the wider media that I'm the young up-and-coming manager to watch. Fingers crossed we're not going to mess this up. Hello and welcome to part four of Non League to Legend. I'm Kevin. Coming up on today's episode, we are at home against National League Ebbsfleet in the FA Cup fourth qualifying round. We also have an away game in the league against Torquay. Torquay feel like a team we're probably going to lose against as well. Since you were last with me, form is continuing to be good. We're on a nice long and beaten run. In fact, there was five consecutive wins in there. Yes, two of them were in the FA Cup against weaker opposition, but three consecutive league wins followed by that draw that was saved by a penalty against last one of last year's non to legend teams, Bath. But I think that's because we had one eye on the excitement of the FA Cup. Not only are we on telly for the first time, televised match, very exciting. Each team given £1,250 from television rights, but that's not where the exciting money side of things can come from. Ignore this. We're pretending that's not there. Look, everything's improving, so we'll ignore that. If we can get through into the first round, there's potential money to be made in the first round imagine away against Sunderland for example I can but dream but a game like that would I mean it would more than double our balance comfortably so there's a lot riding on this game of course we're probably going to lose it because Ebbsfleet are the division above and they're doing all right Ebbsfleet if we have a little look at how they're getting on lower mid table in the National League so I don't know can we catch them in poor form when we're in reasonably good form there's an outside chance, but we're very much underdogs in this game, as is reflected by the odds, inexplicably, from 442 magazine. I don't really look at the odds very often. Didn't realise 442 were now down. I know I know the print industry is dying, but do they really have to take, start taking bets? Goodness me. And we've also done a couple of transfers. We've finally got some scouts into the club, which is probably more significant than the players the scouts have brought in. But if we have a look at staff, um, we've managed to appoint a chief scout, um, who's, I mean, look at that, a seven and a seven for judging player ability and potential. We're spoiling ourselves and two scouts to work with him, a six and an eight. One could argue that perhaps Derek should be the chief scout. And then we've got Dylan as well, who's another solid seven and seven. I went through so many potential chief scouts trying to bring anyone in. So many of them went off to other clubs. But in the end, we managed to get Miles Gray. And fingers crossed, he's going to be an absolute superstar for us. And the fact that we now have a scouting team is what's allowed us to actually start bringing in some loans as well. Because everyone we've signed so far has been a free transfer somehow. And I don't, I assume it's through my director of football. All this time, we were still getting scout reports come through. In fact, they're the ones that were pre-game. These are my ones. We were still getting scout reports through, even though we had no scouts. I think it was my director of football doing it. I don't know. It might have been. But these were all players who were signed after coming in on trial, because there was no way to get scout reports on the players. So we got lists of players that we should scout on our scouting reports, but there were no scout reports on them. So I guess that was a list that was coming for our director of football. And then we would trial them, and if they were any good, we'd bring them in. But now we're actually finally able to do some scout reports. So we've strengthened in two areas where I think we probably did need to strengthen. So James Spruce is an 18-year-old Welsh striker um, who theoretically comes in as the best striker at the club. Obviously, I'm not starting either of these lads today. They've only just arrived. The, the team who got us to the fourth qualifying round of the FA Cup deserve the glory of playing on telly. So both these lads will start on the bench. But James Spruce, on loan until the end of the season. If he's as good as his star rating suggests he is, there should be many goals in James Spruce. And then Albie Hopkins comes in from Oxford. And he's a winger who can also, he can pretty much play any of these positions as well. He's accomplished in the centre of midfield, plus further forward. But we, I mean, we've brought him in to play on the right-hand side of midfield where we were pretty weak. Again, considerably better than what we've got at the club. Never played anywhere else. But he's on loan until the end of the season. Neither of them are costing us anything. They're here for the season. If they turn out to be rubbish, who cares? They were free. Uh, but like I say, neither of them playing on telly because that would just be unreasonable. So this is a team we're putting out there for the Ebbsfleet game. And it is, it's closing in on being a settled team now. I think 
certainly until the new boys came in, this was pretty much my settled first choice starting eleven. So it's McDonough in goal, a back four of Wyatt, Bender, Mills and Hurd, with Nanetti, Noble, Sambu and Wilkin as our midfield, and Merson and Moyo up front. There are a couple of players who've been pushing for starting spots. Camjo, for example, um, now there's been debate in the chat in the comments about how we say this dead you is that how we say his name um he's he's played a few games but he's not even on the bench today because of the new boys who've come in he's going to feel properly hard done by you can see we're still bringing lots of players in on trial as well despite the fact we're not able to actually let's let's get rid of everyone who's unavailable we're not able to pay him any money i'm literally bringing him in on trial in the hope that someone comes in with five star current ability and we'll just break the break the wage budget a little bit more but unless they're perfect players they ain't coming in but we'll keep the revolving door of trialists going but that's our team we're on the telly let's get into the match i'm so excited we're on the telly against ebsfleet what <laughs> well I used, I used to be part owner of ebsfleet many years ago who else was involved was it called my football club who else was involved in that back in the day do i still officially own a share in ebsfleet if sh if so can we throw this game um Right, what are we going to say? We've just got to be calm. Um, go out there and pull off an upset. I think that's the best we can possibly say. We can't be expecting victories. We're expecting to lose. Um, I don't care about the fact they've got a player missing. Um, they're in good form. They're 15th in their division. How are they in good form? They're a good team. We're going to we're going to have to be at our best to get. Yeah, we are going to be have to be at our best today. Hopefully. Uh, why are we so zoomed out again? Where's this stand? Has that stand been there all along? Have we erected a stand just for a telly game? I, I, I may have just not noticed it previously. I feel like that's not been there before, though. Have Ebb Street brought... Have the telly brought a stand with them? I don't know. Maybe it's been there. All those seats, though. It doesn't look very familiar. Noble's just given away a penalty. I mean, what is he doing? First minute of the match on telly and our 36-year-old experienced player, supposed to our team leader, the guy who's supposed to lead with all of his years of experience. He's on the telly, so he's done a slide tackle in the penalty area, given away a penalty. We're 1-0 down, two minutes on the clock. And we can only blame Noble for that. What on earth is he thinking? He's just had a rush of blood to the head and done something properly stupid. It could it could get it could get messy from here. I, I'm i well aware that this could be about to turn a little bit dirty. Um, they're coming at us again. We've still not really got out of our half. We're only four minutes on the clock. And we're sliding in again. Cracking. Right, hold on. Have we got to get stuck in on? Because if we have, don't. Right, change. No more get stuck in. Because we've already given away a penalty. And we're still sliding around like idiots. Pack it in, morons. This, if, if I recall from our first episode, this is supposed to be a team with very limited determination. So stop sliding in. It doesn't matter. We might lose. Who cares? You're not determined. Oh, we're two 0 down after five minutes. This is on the telly. When I'm when I'm managing in the Champions League final in twenty years' time, they're going to be able to go into the archives and and pull this out. And I'm never going to live this down. I, I think we put. Do I? I've got a, I've got a couple of masks. I'm tempted to put a mask on, just in the hope that when the time comes, when they are go yes, we'll do the tactical change. I mean, it's going to make a big difference now, and it two nil down after five minutes. Ugh. We're still counter attacking. I don't know what to do. I'm so glad there's a, that little St Albans flag behind the burger van. It's so cute. Moyo, Moyo again. I mean, if he'd have if he'd have stuck that away, then everything's everything changes because it would be six minutes on the clock, two one, and we're back in it. Noble now the chance to deliver one of his one of his specials. He fails miserably, and then of course he's never going to be able to track back properly because he's he's a thousand years old. Absolutely, have only had two shots and they've scored twice. We've just gifted them a two goal head start when they're already a better team than us. We need to sort ourselves out. I should probably be shouting, um, concentrate. If I could add concentrate idiots onto the end of that, I would. Because there's not a chance we should be 2-0 down. Oh, Bender's overwhelmed by being told to concentrate. I I ask you. I I mean, I, I give up. He can't cope with being asked to concentrate. Right, we've successfully managed to do a tackle in the penalty area without giving away a penalty. Which is progress. 
but Ebbsfleet are just knocking it around as if they're as if they're a decent side. If we manage, I mean, we're hovering around the playoffs in our division at the moment. If we manage to somehow pull off a fluke of getting promoted, these are one of the worst teams in the division above, and they're making us look like we've never played football before. Wilkin running down the right wing, Merson's in behind, Moyo's in the middle. Moyo, Merson cuts it back to Moyo. Twenty-three minutes on the clock, we've got our goal back. It's Moyo's tenth of the season which is some pretty impressive stats considering we're still in October. But Sam Merson did brilliantly here, using pace and strength to get past his marker. And, I mean, their goalkeeper is going to feel a little bit disappointed. Yeah, there you go. Look, there's his disappointment. But, I mean, it, it literally went, it rolled over the top of your boot, mate. You can't be that sad about it. Don't be blaming your defence for that. But it doesn't matter because Moyo tucks it away. And all of a sudden, the game is alive again. And Nanetti is coming down the left wing. Remember, we've got the two youngsters on loan on the bench who are theoretically improvements to the team. If we bring them on, we're getting better. Have Ebbsfleet got two players on the bench who are going to make their team better? Of course they haven't. Right, come on. We've got this now. Now we've composed ourselves. Now, now we've concentrated and Tom Bender's calmed down about it. Noble, beautiful ball over the top for Merson to chase. He's got acres of space. Sam Merson makes it 2-2. Me and Merson doing the same dance at the same time because we're that in sync. And it's two all. We're showing off on the telly. I'm glad I didn't put a mask on. I, I mean, that's a beautiful pass from Noble. Forget what he did in the first minute. That's what he's in the team to do. Because that was just a stunning pass for this level. And it left Merson in so much space for him to tuck it away. And it's now all to play for again, boys and girls. 2-2, two, two, 29 minutes. Merson's on the ball again. We're rampant. It's over the top to Moyo. Moyo brings it down like he's a Premier League player. And, I mean, he, had, he got a little bit little bit fancy there. I think his first touch made him think he was probably better than he is. But Noble again, he is just spraying the ball around. Moyo's in behind now and their keeper just manages to make the save. But it comes only as far as Sam Merson. And David Noble, after a, after an iffy start, is pulling all of the strings today. It's with Moyo again. And Moyo beats one man, beats another. And he's brought down on the edge of the area, but it's not a foul. Mills intercepts, though, tries to play it back towards Merson. But it doesn't make it all the way through. And we've got we've got Ebbsfleet on the ropes here. Noble in midfield again. Another ball over the top. Moyo's in behind. Moyo forces. We've had five clear-cut chances now. We've actually been quite wasteful. We should be well ahead. And it's largely thanks to Noble. Noble with the corner, doesn't make it to, my, to Merson, but Merson does eventually get hold of it, and it's with Sambu in midfield. Just holding on to it, giving everyone a chance to get themselves set back up again. He's fouled, draws the free kick, but nothing comes from it. Noble with another corner, this time from the right-hand side, but it's straight into the keeper's hands. I can't believe we've had five clear-cut chances and only scored twice. Those stats tell me we've destroyed Ebbsfleet, but because we gave him that two-goal head start, we've not got anything to show for it. Noble... The problem is going to be when Noble has to come off because he's not going to be able to play 90 minutes. He never does. And we're 3-2 down just before half-time. We do not deserve this at all. And it purely comes down to quality of finishing. We've got the youngster Spruce on the bench who must be licking his lips at the prospect of playing in this St Albans team that has created five clear-cut chances against a team from the division above in this first half and just hasn't been able to convert enough of them. He's a poacher. He's going to be. He could come on and get a second half at trick if we carry on playing like this. The only at trick. I've been in the south too long. What's an at trick? But oh. Are we going to be able to have Spruce and Noble on the pitch at the same time? We pro Who do we take off for, for, to bring Spruce on, though? Because both Merson and Moyo, despite missing a lot of chances, have both played really well. Um, unlucky. Yeah, unlucky things haven't gone our way. I think that's absolutely fair. We should be ahead. Everyone knows we should be ahead. The, the half-time analysts on the telly are telling us we should be ahead. Um, I don't... Oh, no, no, no. 4-2 down. We don't deserve this at all. Uh, what do I tell them to do? I'm just going to encourage them. Because we have played so well. But it's just that extra little bit of quality from a team, a division above ours. They get a chance and they score it. We get a chance. And we need two more before it turns into a goal. Oh, it's very upsetting. Right, Wyatt with the free kick. If that had gone in. If that had gone in, it's all to play for again. I think we need to get... 
look at the terrible game Sambu's having. I think we probably need to get Sambu off immediately. We've got Camjo on the bench, but I kind of want to bring Hopkins on. But there's, he can play in central midfield, but it feels like such a waste to play him there. So we'll bring on Camjo for now. What that does mean is we're committing to David Noble playing the, the full 90 minutes, which I think is fair enough. He's had an absolute blinder. He's just going to have to... He doesn't have to move around very much. He just needs to stand there and keep playing those through balls. Cross comes in and it's it's cleared, but only as far as Camio. And it's with Wilkin. This is probably going to be one of his last touches before the new winger comes on. Noble getting up there on the end of crosses. Now stop running so much, David. We want you there for your passing, not your heading. Goodness me. Mills now. All the way across to Wyatt and we get the chance to build again. Wyatt with a big ball over the top. Moyo's in behind. Moyo scores. It's an hour gone. 4-3. It's still all to play for. It's back on, boys and girls. And Moyo is having an exceptional game. This is on the telly and he's playing against a team from the division above. Surely we're getting some phone calls in the morning about David Moyo. 11th goal of the season now. He's a proper player. Right. Nanetti is not playing particularly well. So what I'm thinking is we can move Wilkin over to the left wing and get Hopkins on. I mean, it's not ideal, but Hopkins is an actual right winger, which has got to be an advantage. They're now playing with a higher tempo. That doesn't scare us. We want to get Spruce on as well. I think Spruce is coming on for Merson now. I know we're still playing a counter-attacking system, but it's because I'm still afraid of what might happen. Right, we'll switch those two to play that way round. I think we are going to have to we're going to have to push on a little bit, aren't we? Let's go to positive and give them a little bit of a push forward shout. Come on. We've got I mean no Noble is I mean he's not moving very much now is he bless him. He's certainly not playing in the next game. That's for sure and it's not really happened for us, has it? We've done so well, but at the death Ebbs Fleet get their fifth. Well, it's, cert it's certainly been an entertaining game to have on the telly. You you've got to think, if you're the BBC or Sky, whoever it is who gets qualifying round games in the FA Cup on the telly, um, you've got to think they're, they're ready to come back and see us again next year because it's, uh, it's, they've got their money's worth on their, on their two and a half grand they've spent for us to share between us. Wilkin, big ball forward, doesn't get anywhere near where it needs to be. We've absolutely destroyed Ebb's fleet for clear-cut chances. We've been mugged, boys and girls. I think this is our first official mugging of FM19's non-league legend. And it would ha it'd have to happen against a team supposedly better than us. But we can't attack beautifully. We were just let down by the fact we weren't clinical enough when we got at the other end. I don't think we should be that disappointed by that. The only disappointment is going to be if Ebb's feet now gets Sunderland away in the next round. Um, it was just one of those days. We played well. They're happy with that. I'm happy with their performance. Um, and now we now we try and pull, pull ourselves together again as we as we head into the league game against who is it? Torquay. Watch him get Sunderland now. David Noble showing what a hero he is here. He's got himself back to 89% condition prior to the Torquay game. It's only three days later. Meanwhile, 18-year-old Hopkins. So I know he's not match fit, but he's not even fit enough to be on the bench. So we're going to name an unchanged team. I don't think. I don't think it's. I don't think it's fair to drop either of the strikers. Despite missing all the chances they missed, Spruce is going to have to wait a little bit longer to make his debut. Uh, but we're going to name an unchanged team and hopefully if we can put in a performance against Torquay, similar to the one we've just put up against Ebb's feet, then it surely is enough to beat a team like Torquay. Um, there you go. It's over to you. Have a good one. I mean... That's not the most inspirational thing I could have said, is it? Now, remember, this is another team playing in yellow. So once again, we're in the pink. This confused me the last team, last time we had to play against a yellow team. Uh, but I'm not going to be foxed this time. We're the pink ones. Let's not cheer on the yellows by mistake. Because I, I may have done that in the, in the last video yesterday. Luckily, only in my head. Hopefully, none of you noticed. But we did have a little bit of a chat about it down in the comments. Nanetti, ball over the top towards Moyo. It's fairly aimless, but Moyo's just everywhere chasing it. But doesn't doesn't quite get there. But it's good to see all of our midfield following David Noble's lead. And just, you know what? We've got two quick strikers. Let's just play the ball over the top to them a lot. And we're 1-0 down. And we've got to stop giving teams head starts. 
I'm not overly worried about losing against Torquay. They're a team... I was surprised to see them in the Conference South. I didn't realise they'd actually fallen this far. I remember fairly regularly playing against Torquay in real life with Posh. Um, and apparently they've just absolutely tumbled through the leagues. So I'm not I'm not that upset if we lose to them because it feels like they're a team that should be should be higher up the pyramid than they are. But we want to at least put up a bit of a fight. They are kind of battling with us for that seventh place playoff spot, which, by the way, if you haven't seen the mess that is the playoffs at this level, oh, my word. If we, it, We'll cross that bridge when we come to it, but someone sent me a link to a video explaining how the playoffs work once you get below the Conference National, and it's, it's a bit of a mess. I, I, will, I will give it that. It's a bit of a mess. Right, we've not been very good in that first half. Um, yeah, that's, I mean, we haven't been the better team. That's a lie, but hopefully they fall for it. Um, where's the league table gone? Let's get the league table back on there. Noble, who's surely not going to be able to stay on the pitch for much longer. Although, yet again, David Noble, best player on the pitch, but we saw against Ebbsfleet as he tired, we just kind of became less and less effective. So much of our play comes through him that once he can't run around anymore, we kind of stop. We need, we need a plan B. And I think we need to take him off because he's just shattered. We've got Cameo on the bench there, so we'll bring him on. We've also got Spruce who can come on if needed. And I think we are going to look to get him. Oh, dear, that's poor from McDonough. That's really poor. I don't even know what he was trying to do there because he's coming for the free kick, but he's almost running along his goal line. He's not actually trying to command his... Oh, dear. Oh, that's poor. That was... Snedka's watching that from the bench thinking my time is nearly is nearly upon us I will be back very soon and I think he's probably right right Moyo's not playing very well at all don't want him to get too big for his boots after his performance in the last game let's give Spruce 25 minutes um are we gonna have to switch to our long ball game I really don't want to have to we don't this is our problem we don't really have a plan b we're still counter-attacking we don't all three of the tactics we've got trained are kind of Let's be solid at the back and hit them on the break. Just variations of it. And we don't really have... We've not really got the personnel to just come at, come at teams and attack them. So it's difficult putting a plan B together. We might just have to accept that sometimes we lose and let's, not, let's try not to lose by too much and just carry on defending all the way through in those games. Uh, but... They're, they're coming at us again. They're all over us. I'm going to say it's because we're tired after our FA Cup exploits. Perhaps I should have rotated the team a little bit. Perhaps Spruce should have started. I don't know. We've got Banton that sat there on the bench as well who's wondering why he isn't getting a look in. So let's get him on for Wilkin and just push the wingers forward a little bit maybe and say, right, come on, we've got to be a bit more positive. He wants to be a poacher, doesn't he? Be a poacher for the last 15 minutes. You've got two properly attacking wingers alongside you. Make use of them. Um, show some passion. Come on now, gentlemen. Banton's not bothered. Oh, he's fired up as well now. Everybody's fired up. But I think I don't think we're going to have enough time to get back into the game. But there's Spruce. Out very wide for a player who's supposed to be a poacher. Sambu. Out to Hurd on the other side. Where's Wilkins? Shouldn't he be hovering around there? It's a lovely cross from Hurd. But there's no one on the end of it. And there's Banton and... Just whistles wide. You know what? We're ahead on clear-cut chances again. We're going to have two muggings in one episode here. And I guess that's got to be a positive. Because if we can get to... It means our defence and our midfield are actually playing reasonably well. We're limiting the amount of chances the opposition are getting. We're creating chances ourselves. We're just not converting them. If we can if we can get Spruce into this team and get him scoring goals at a better rate than Merson has been... Hmm... We have pondering to do because I like Merson and I like Moyo. Moyo is obviously scoring goals, but they're just not scoring enough. Is it that we? I think Merson's the weak link. I'm not happy because I'm not happy. We should have done better in that game. Hmm. There is work to do still, boys and girls. The important thing is we're still well above our pre-season prediction of 18th and we're right in what the board are looking for, which is mid-table. I'm not going to be bothered if we don't get promoted this season. If we finish mid-table this season, I count that as a win because it means I don't get fired, which is an improvement on what happened in season one of non to Legend last year. 
If you've enjoyed that, please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on there for me. Subscribe to the channel for daily Football Manager videos. And thank you very much for watching.